Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips and I want to talk about diet and kidney disease today and I'll just start by saying a frightening development in healthcare is the increasing number of health professionals who are recommending high protein diets for many conditions including obesity and type 2 diabetes. Several health professionals testifying at the Dietary Guidelines Advisory Committee in July of 2019 advocated for a high protein diet and one doctor said during her testimony that anyone who develops diabetes is most certainly carb resistant. On July 9, 2019, an ad which included the signatures of over 50 health professionals and advocates appeared in the New York Times and the Washington Post which stated that all Americans should be told that a low carb diet is a healthy option and the ad was paid for by Atkins Nutritionals, so consider the source. The problem is that while high protein diets, low carb diets might seem a little better in the short term, people do lose weight quickly, mainly due to water loss, and glucose levels do drop. They're often very, very harmful in the long term. Studies have shown for many years that high protein diets are particularly contraindicated for people who have chronic kidney disease and that lower protein plant-based diets are better. Now there are a lot of reasons for this, including that plant-based diets are almost always naturally lower in protein than a diet based on animal foods. Higher protein intake has been shown to lead to negative changes in kidney function, including accelerated progression of kidney disease. The National Kidney Foundation, interestingly enough, recommends a vegetarian diet, referencing studies showing that such a diet prevents or slows the development of some of the complications of kidney disease, like heart disease and protein loss in the urine, and also slows the progression of the disease itself. Dietary acid reduction decreases injury to the kidneys and slows the decline of filtration rate, or GFR. In fact, oral sodium bicarbonate is often prescribed to buffer the acid load for people who continue to eat what we would say was a normal diet. I think it's pretty abnormal, but it's normal for our society. One of the benefits of plant-based diets for kidney patients is that uh, plant foods are generally acid neutral or base producing, which reduces the dietary acid load. Thus, it is easier for a person eating more plants to achieve, to achieve an acid neutral state. Research shows that just adding fruits and vegetables to the diet have the same effect as taking sodium bicarbonate. So no big, huge dietary change here. Just eat more fruits and veggies and things get better. In another study, stage four kidney patients were randomly assigned to either a year of sodium bicarbonate or instructed to eat more fruits and vegetables. Both groups had reduced kidney injury and improved markers for metabolic acidosis. Those assigned to eat fruits and vegetables did not experience hyperkalemia, a common concern often expressed about plant-based diets for kidney patients. Now it is true that plant foods are higher in potassium. However, studies show that the higher fiber content of a more plant-based diet increases transit time, which results in lower potassium absorption. On the other hand, diets high in animal foods often result in constipation, which is a risk factor for the development of hyperkalemia. Now, these two studies that I just mentioned are significant in my view for a couple of reasons. Sodium bicarbonate doesn't have any nutritional value, while fruits and vegetables do, so it'd be better to eat those. Additionally, these studies show that small changes can make a big difference. Just adding more fruits and vegetables improves markers for health for kidney patients. Of course, more change is always better, but any change toward eating more plants and less animal food improves outcomes. Many patients are placed on a low protein, low phosphorus diet in order to slow the progression of kidney disease. To facilitate this, formulated food products are available, but patients don't like them, and they often have difficulty maintaining these diets over a period of time. One research group placed patients with kidney failure on a vegan diet and showed that results were very similar to the conventional low protein diet that patients generally don't like. While it's true that plants do contain more phosphorus than animal foods, the bioavailability of the phosphorus is significantly reduced as compared to the phosphorus in animal foods. In another study in which patients were assigned to an animal-based low-protein diet or a vegetarian-based low-protein diet, it showed that the blood urea nitrogen, urine urea nitrogen, protein catabolic rate, and 24-hour urine creatinine and phosphate levels were lower in the vegetarian group. Other benefits of plant-based diets for kidney patients include positive changes to the gut microbiome, which result in fewer uremic toxins, reduced proteinuria, and slower GFR decline. 
Now, if you're a kidney patient, I could go on and on, but the picture is very clear. A lower protein plant-based diet is a better way for you to preserve kidney function and may in fact keep you from having to become a dialysis patient. Some new studies indicate that even healthy people who don't have kidney disease can be harmed by eating high protein diets. And I'll tell you about a couple of these studies. A Dutch study included 4,837 patients who had a history of myocardial infarction. The subject's average protein intake of 71 grams a day with about two thirds from animal protein and a third from plants. The higher the protein intake, the faster kidney function worsened. Decline in, in GFR rate um, was doubled for patients who had daily protein uh, intake of 1.2 grams per kilogram of body weight as compared to those with intake of less than 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight. The association between protein intake and decline in GFR was three times stronger for patients who also had diabetes, so that's an additional risk factor. The authors wrote, despite the fact that our patients receive state-of-the-art drug treatment, we observed a beneficial effect of low protein intake on kidney function. So if you don't want to get kidney disease, a lower protein plant-based diet is what you want to do. Another study included over 9,200 patients who were classified into quartiles of daily protein intake and followed for an average of 11 and a half years. Prevalence of both renal hyperfiltration and decline in GFI were highest for those in the highest quartile of protein intake. The researchers also looked at the relationship between high protein intake and increased risk and accelerated decline of kidney function and found that those in the highest quartile had a 32% higher risk of rapid decline in GFR than those in the lowest quartile. They concluded, and I think this is important, these findings lead us to infer that a higher intake of protein may be an independent risk factor for renal hyperfiltration that can accelerate deterioration of kidney function. In response to these studies, authors of an accompanying editorial wrote, quote, given these and other data, it's time to unleash the taboo and make it loud and clear that a high protein diet is not as safe as claimed and it may compromise kidney health and result in more rapid kidney function decline in individuals or populations at high risk of CKD. There is a known mechanism of action for how high protein diets negatively affect kidney health and function as outlined above. It's very, very clear. Lower protein intake is better and plants are better than animal foods for preserving kidney function for patients who have already developed kidney disease and preventing kidney disease and those who are fortunate to have not developed it yet. Okay, that's all for today and all for the week. Hit the subscriber button if you're not a subscriber. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think might enjoy watching it and I will be back to you next week with more news.